This is Dr. R. Winston Mazakis. I welcome you to our page on YouTube. And I hope and pray that this study will be a blessing to your life. After you have listened to this message, and if you'd like to listen now or later to more studies, go to YouTube at any time. Type my name. Winston Mazakis. W-I-N-S-T-O-N. Mazakis. M-A-Z-A-K-I-S. On the YouTube search line. And click on find. Once you are on our page, you can choose the study you would like to hear in English, Arabic, or French. And if you are interested in studying the Bible by correspondence, free of charge, please contact the website that you see on this screen. And if you would like to study the Bible scholarly at a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time to earn a graduate of theology degree or a doctor of theology degree without leaving your home, please go to memjohn, that's one word, memjohn.com in order to know about the Institute of Biblical and International Studies where you will master the greatest subjects at a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time. And I assure you, you will never regret taking this course. I know it will be a great blessing to you. And I assure you, you will never find a better place to study the Bible in depth like at the Institute of Biblical and International Studies. Ezekiel chapter 27 and verse 3. Here God is speaking to Ezekiel and is saying, And say unto Tyrus, All thou art that situated at the entry of the sea, which are merchants of the people for many isles, Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, O Tyre, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. Thy borders are in the midst of the sea. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. That's verse 4. Here, even God, in a way, has told the world that there is a town that was of perfect beauty. And it was. The city of Tyre is in the southern portion of what we call today Lebanon northern of Israel. And it is a city that is divided into two parts. The first main part is on the mainland and the other part on a small island. And on the small island there was a palace and a huge temple. The temple of Melkart, the god of Tyre. And Tyre had people that were very industrious people. They were people that were born merchants. And that's why they reached the ends of the world at the time. Being situated where they were, they were like a bridge between the East and the West. And Mount Lebanon behind them was covered with cedar trees. That was for their advantage. Because of that great mountain and the beautiful trees they have, and the strong wood that they could get from it, they could build a tremendous fleet. Fleet that took them to areas where other nations couldn't go before. And they start to find that there are tremendous opportunities. They went to those nations, as you read in chapter 37, to so many nations. They would buy their commodities from them at a very low price and bring it to other nations and sell it at a very high price. Now, here the Bible is saying something extremely important, that God has told the world that Tyre has put its uh, borders in the midst of the sea. As a matter of fact, at one time, the whole Mediterranean Sea became a Phoenician lake because they dominated all the Mediterranean with their fleet. And they start sending colonies from Tyre to live in many areas on the shores of the Mediterranean. One of their colonies that they built was the city of Carthage, the city that almost dominated the world had it not been for the prophecies of the Word of God, prophesying the rise of Rome and the domination of Rome to the uh, ancient world. Carthage under Hannibal almost destroyed Rome and dominated the ancient world. But the prophecy had to be fulfilled and Rome had to rise to power in accordance with the prophecy. But they were the ones that created Hannibal. Hannibal was a Phoenician. His father came from Tyre. And the Carthage 
of Carthage was a Phoenician city that was built in northern Africa as a colony for the people of Tyre. Now, I would like to show you some of the achievements that the people of Tyre, here the Bible is showing us how, what a great city it was. Now, some of the achievements that Tyre did or achieved in those days were the first one, the first people in history to discover Western Africa, the coast of Western Africa. They were the first ones in history to be commissioned by Pharaoh to go around the continent of Africa. And according to the National Ge Geographic magazine of August 1974, they were the first ones to come from the old world and discover America. 2,000 years before Columbus and hundreds of years before the Vikings. As a matter of fact, they discovered Phoenician vases and pictures in the Caribbean. How in the world these things came all the way from Lebanon and were buried in the, some of the Caribbean islands? Except that these people were here about 500 BC, 2,000 years before Columbus. Yes, sir. No, they were not. Maybe they couldn't go back and they mingled with the Indians. Nobody knows. But what the problem was, they believed that in the commission that Pharaoh gave to the Phoenicians to go around Africa, that one of the ships got lost and they found themselves drifted in the sea and they found themselves in uh, Central America and the Caribbean and they stayed there. But nobody knows whether they went there, there are no records, or they died there. But most probably that they stayed there and they died there. But they got all their stuff with them and they found many of the stuff that were made in Tyre, right in some of the islands in the Caribbean. Probably you heard that President Erdogan of Turkey, who is a very conservative Muslim, decided that the Muslims discovered America before Columbus, about four or five hundred years before Columbus. And I have a story that came that he's totally wrong, because when Muawiyah, who became the Caliph, changed his headquarters from Mecca to Damascus, because Damascus was more sophisticated and modern, wanted finally to conquer Constantinople, which now is called Istanbul. And he decided to commission the Phoenicians, who were known for their ability to build good ships and for their extensive travel on the seas with a mastery of all directions and routes of the seas to build a fleet for his army so that they can go by sea and conquer the city of Constantinople. The Arab armies came to the shores of Lebanon to get into the ships and sailed to Constantinople. But when they saw the sea and the waves and the ships, they could not move. They were frozen in their places. The Caliph Muawiyah tried so hard to convince them that it's safe and it's okay and that that the ones that are going to navigate those ships are masters of it for hundreds of years. But no one moved. And finally, the Caliph himself had to come on a ship, stand on the deck, and ask the soldiers to get on board, showing them that he is not going to jeopardize their life because he himself got onto the ship. And then the army came onto the ship very hesitantly. By the way, this story was in our history books in school, and we learned it in school. And those events took place in the mid-7th century after Christ. And it was not to go and discover America. They went to go and conquer what is called now Istanbul, which is the main city in Turkey. Something that I believe Erdogan doesn't want to remember. The Arab had never been known to be masters of the sea. And that's why I believe very strongly that President Erdogan of Turkey was totally wrong when he said that it was first the Muslims who discovered America. It was the Lebanese. And they were not Muslims, by the way. They were mainly pagan worshippers. And the ancient Phoenicians... They were probably the first ones to go to England from the old world and dig for tin in the English Isles. And he that said that you put your borders in the midst of the sea. They're the ones that were so courageous to ride on the sea. And the thing that helped them to really become tremendous, as, as I mentioned, was the abundance of lumber they have on Mount Lebanon and the calmness of the Mediterranean in most of the year. Now, 
this is to show that when the Bible said that it would put its borders on the of the sea, and they did. They ruled the sea at that time. Then the Bible mentioned in chapter 27 that they took things from all over the world, brought them from their native lands like the spices from Arabia, the horses from Armenia, the tin from England, the gold from Spain. They brought that from its native land and sold it in the other lands where they were going to bring stuff at higher prices. They bought it from its native lands at low price and sold it in the other places at a very high price. Let me show you some examples. And that's uh, in Ezekiel chapter, chapter 27, verse 12 and 15. They bought their horses from Armenia and uh, their dates and textiles from Mesopotamia. They bought the ivory from Ethiopia and India. They purchased their spices and pearls from Arabia. They bought the brass from the Sinai Peninsula, the tin from England, the gold and silver and lead from Spain, the vases from Greece. They bought it from their native lands at very low prices mentioned and then sold them at the other places at a very high price. Here the Bible mentions in chapter 27 and 28 that they were excelled at clothing the kings. Do you know the kings of the earth? Their best favorite color was purple color. And that's why the robe is always purple. That's royal robe. And it was the Phoenician who discovered that particular uh, color. And they kept the secret of dyeing the purple robe for a long period of time. They were the only, and the Bible says that, that they were the ones that clothed the princes of the world and the kings of the world. And that's why they kept that secret of dyeing purple for a long time. No one knew how they could make that beautiful color. And it was a shell that they found in the sea that has an animal in it that made that color. And they uh, industrialized it and dyed the clothes and sold that particular raven to the king. Now, some of their industries that they started that made its beauty and spread its tremendous business and industries all over the world included, those industries included the lumber industry, and Egypt used that a lot. And don't forget that Solomon used the lumber industry to build his temple. He used lots of it. The lumber industry, the shipmaking industry, the textile industry, the mining industries, the uh, melting, casting, and making of heavy industries, cosmetics, earrings, recluses, rings, golden daggers, perfume boxes, and all kinds of gold and silver and ivory vases. Let me tell you something else. The people of Thai were the first ones in the world to invent something every one of you used this morning, except maybe one or two. What do you think it is? Used, you used. A comb. Everyone used the comb this morning, I think. <laughs> they were the ones to make the comb out, out of ivory. As a matter of fact, when they took the comb to Greece, the Grecians wouldn't use the comb. You know why? Because they thought, man, alive, I, we know they said we can't use something like that because it has a spell on it. If we put it in our head, they're going to take control of us. And they wouldn't use the comb for a long period of time in Greece. They wouldn't buy the comb. And uh, they didn't know it's just a simple thing to re rearrange your hair. I mean, just your hair. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Then we said uh, some of their industry was the uh, purple dye industry and then the glass industry. See this glass? It's uh, transparent. The Egyptians were the first ones to make the glass, but it was opaque. You could not look through it like the ones there at the door. But the Phoenicians in Tyre were the first ones to make it transparent. Here we have a tremendous city that the Bible, and it was a city-state means it was one city with a king and a government and an army and full independence. The Bible gave two prophecies about Tyre. Both prophecies were implied in chapter 26 and 27 of Ezekiel. But I would like to attract your attention first to Isaiah chapter 23, and that is very important to show you something that is fascinating. Here in Isaiah chapter 23, 
It tells us something definite concerning the destruction of Tyre. And he said, for instance, verse 3, listen to that. And by great waters and seed of Seor, the harvest of the river is her revenue. Tremendous riches were coming to Tyre. And she is a mark, not Kmart, of the nations. All right? In verse 8, who hath taken the counsel against Tyre? The crowning city whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth. Verse 15, And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king, after the seventy years shall Tyre sing as a harlot. Here the Bible is telling us that Tyre will be destroyed and forgotten for seventy years. After 70 years, Tyre will rise again. Now if you open your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 26, you will find something very important there. In chapter 26 and verse 2, it says, Son of man, because that Tyre has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, that was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me, I shall be replenished. Now she is laid waste. For how long? Listen to that. In verse 4 and 5. And they that destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers, I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. I'm going to wipe her out. It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. In other words, that's the end of it. Now, in Isaiah, he said it's going to be forgotten 70 years. And here it says, that's the end of it. It'll never rise again. It'll be just a place for the spreading of the sea. And then he goes on to speak about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar. Here in Ezekiel, the prophet is seeing two things that's going to happen to Tyre. The first time... It's going to be destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, as it is said in that chapter, in Ezekiel chapter 26. And at that time, the details of how long it would be destroyed were given by Isaiah. That will be after the destruction of Tyre by Nebuchadnezzar, it will be destroyed for only 70 years. After a while, it will be replenished again. But here, God allowed Ezekiel to see that Tyre would be destroyed and will never rise again as a nation after that. Or as a very important city. The Bible tells us very clearly in verse 7 and chapter 26 of Ezekiel, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring unto Tyre Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And we know the story, you can read history, that Nebuchadnezzar came and he attacked Tyre and destroyed the city. And the destruction of the city lasted for 70 years until the coming of the Persian Empire. That Tyre regained its strength and the Persian kings gave her a favor and treated her better. But that was exactly 70 years from its first destruction that it rose again to world dominance as it was before. And her fleet started dominating the Mediterranean again exactly 70 years but here the bible said the day will come when it will be destroyed and will be destroyed for good and it was great again for about 200 years until 332 bc in 332 bc alexander the great came and alexander the great was a man that always loved wherever he went to offer sacrifices for his victory to the gods he considered himself a high priest. He was the emperor of the whole world. And he offered sacrifices in every town where he entered, where there was a big temple. And that's an extremely important point that I would like you to remember for future reference as you study when he came to Jerusalem. That's fascinating to prove to you that the word of God is true and that the book of Daniel is the book of God. Because that had played a tremendous, the book of Daniel played a tremendous role in the preservation of Jerusalem at the time.
He came to Tyre. Tyre opened its arms for him. They got rid of the uh, Persians who at the end became a tremendous burden to Tyre. They were taxing Tyre and uh, treating her bad. So finally the new king came. They thought that was a tremendous relief for them. They received him with a great reception and they built for him an ark of triumph in Tyre. And I was under that ark and I visited those streets, the ancient streets of Tyre where they had the ark. And I took tours there. It's a beautiful place. So here they took him on a walk near that ark to show him what, what they did for him. They took him to the amphitheater and then to the seashore. And he looked from the seashore and he saw that beautiful island with a beautiful building. He said, what's that building? They said, this is our temple. And the temple, they say, was equally as beautiful as the temple of Jerusalem. He said, there is a temple. Well, I'm a high priest. Well, let's go. I want to offer sacrifice to the gods for my victories. They said, oh, oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Hold it for a second. No one can offer sacrifices in our temple except our king who is the high priest. Only our king offers sacrifices in the temple. According to our religion, no one can offer sacrifices except the king of Tyre. He said, no, what, what are you talking about here? I am the king. I am the king of kings. No one tells me I can't offer sacrifices. They said, we can. Do you know for that word what he did? He destroyed the city of Tyre totally and he crucified 2,000 men on the shores of Tyre. 2,000 men were crucified on the shores of that week. The rest of the people fled to the island. He said, well, so what they fled to the island? I'm going to go there and offer sacrifices. Well, how are we going to go to the island? Those people, the island was, there was a tremendous wall around the island. There's no way. A power can go inside that island. He said, I will. He ordered his soldiers that bring me all the Phoenicians that stayed alive and make them work. Get all the rubble of the island. Put the city in rubble. He dismantled the whole city of Tyre. And he brought all the rubbles of the city and dumped it in the sea. It took him seven months to build the causeway. Connecting the mainland with the island. Then he went to the island. And he entered the island, he killed everyone in there, and he entered into the city, and he offered sacrifices. Now listen, that's an extremely important point. No one, he said, no one stand in my way of entering a temple to offer sacrifices to my God. Now this is a very important point. One thing I would like to attract your attention to right now is the fact first that he destroyed, dismantled the city, and made her like a rock. There is nothing on it. See, exactly as the Bible prophesied. Here the prophecy of the word of God was given in 600 BC. And the prophecy was fulfilled 300 years later. And do you know something else? Fire, since then, never, never rose to be a great city never rose to be a great city and until today even today the city of tyre is only a place for the spreading of nets that's only for fishermen for not just uh, you know for a hobby this is for fishermen that are their career as fishermen and this is why every time i went to tyre i remember this prophecy because before you reach Tyre, about maybe two miles, you would smell its fish from about two miles. It's a dirty city, it's a poor city. And the government of Lebanon before the Civil War tried several times to bring industries to the beautiful city of Tyre. It's tremendous location, yet every time they tried, they failed. And the city always remained a poor city for the last 2,400 years. And it never rose to have its, its first glory. And I believe because the Bible condemned that city and God cursed that city. And he said that city will never rise again to be a great power. And history has proved that God means what he said. Amen. 
with all the power of all the nations trying to raise Tyre into another big main major city and they all failed because God said it will never rise again to be a major city I, I'm not talking about history in the last two three months I'm talking about history in the last 2300 years prove that the word of God stands solid and we have in our hands a Bible that is the word of a sovereign God. God bless you. By the way, if you want to hear what happened when Alexander the Great went to Jerusalem and demanded that he would enter into the, the temple of God and offer sacrifices for his gods, this is a fantastic thing. You've got to hear what happened. And in order to do that, you go to YouTube and type my name on the search line. You go to our pages, and on one of our pages, you will find a sermon in English or French about Alexander in Jerusalem. Alexander the Great. It's called Alexander the Great, the Greek Empire. You can listen to that, and you will find out fascinating things that happened because of the Word of God, showing you the tremendous credibility of the Bible, which is the Word of a Sovereign God.